Welcome to lesson one of quantum mechanics. The learning goal for today is nothing less than to become one with the fundamental mystery of quantum mechanics, with apologies to Richard Feynman. Let's talk about an experiment, an experiment with bullets. We fire bullets at a uh, armored barrier of some kind, and uh, we watch them hit in various places. What I'd like you to do is to think about how you'd represent the position of the bullets as they strike the screen. Go ahead and stop the podcast and make a little sketch. Then we'll watch again as the bullets hit the screen. And you'll notice this time that there's a histogram. So the idea is you could use a histogram to represent the position of the bullets as they hit the screen. Notice that um, it's a statistical representation, which just shows you sort of what the variation is on the coordinate of the bullet as it hits the screen. If you fire the bullets many, many times, you'd ultimately see a distribution that developed to look something like this Gaussian. Now, what happens if we put an armored plate in front of the gun with a slit and we fire the bullets again? Again, they'll hit the armor, but this time some of them get through the slit and hit the armor plate behind. Again, I'd like you to think about the distribution of bullets as they hit the wall. Let's fire the gun again and watch the histogram develop. The idea is that it'll still be some kind of a Gaussian, but it's a Gaussian that's formed behind the slit so that it's shifted over a little bit from the old Gaussian that we had before the, the plate was there. We could do this again with another slit located slightly to the right of the first slit, and you'll notice that the bullets again, some get through. You'll notice that as they pass through, some of them get deflected a little bit. Maybe they get close to an edge or something. I don't know. But uh, they form a distribution which um, looks like another Gaussian, but this time the Gaussian is displaced to the right instead of to the left. You see how that works. Now the question is, what happens if I put both slits together? What happens to the distribution of bullets as they hit the final armor barrier? I'd like you to predict what that distribution is going to look like based on the picture you see here. And then let's run the experiment and see what the distribution really is. You'll notice that, uh, again, it's a kind of a histogram. But this time, there's a peak under the right slit, and there's a peak under the left slit. So that the overall histogram is sort of like a double hump distribution. How are these histograms related? Can you come up with some kind of a mathematical expression that relates the left probability distribution and the right probability distribution, in other words, the probability distribution of bullets when the left and the right slits are open, to the probability distribution you'd expect to see with both slits open. I hope you came up with something like this, where the probability distribution with both slits open is the simple sum of the distributions with either of the two slits open. Now here's a different experiment involving waves. So the idea is we got a wave source that produces some waves, and they come down and hit the bottom of the pond or whatever it is. How would you represent the intensity of waves reaching the bottom of the screen? You might come up with something like this. Notice they're at the center, they're closest to the source, and as you move to the right and left, you get a little further from the source, so the amplitude's going to drop or the intensity's going to drop. What if I stick a slit in here? I'm going to get a distribution that shifted to the left. It's a little bit like the distribution of bullets when we put one slit in. You could do the same thing with another slit, but this one to the right. Again, we'll get an intensity distribution, but this time the intensity distribution will be shifted to the right. So the question is, what happens when I open two slits? Let's look at the intensity distribution with two slits open. You'll notice something different is happening. 
This doesn't really look like the situation with bullets. What is the intensity going to look like? It's a three hump distribution. We have two slits, we have three humps. It's kind of crazy. How are those related? There's the left distribution, there's the right distribution, and there's both. Think about that a second. Stop the podcast if you like. To understand the distribution of intensity for waves, you need to know the idea of an amplitude. The intensity is proportional to the square of the amplitude, but the total amplitude is the sum of the amplitude from the left and the amplitude from the right. We get the idea of interference. Now there's a Visual Python demo I can't do, but I'll provide the, uh, I'll provide the code so you can run the demo yourself if you like. But I want to repeat the whole thing with electrons. Now remember we had bullets. These were classical bullets that went through a slit. And then we had waves going through slits. These are now electrons. Now electrons, unfortunately, you can't see them in flight. They're very tiny and difficult to watch. But you can see that when you turn the electron gun on, they make little flashes on the screen at the bottom. So if we open a slit, we see flashes. And we can make a histogram of the flashes as they appear. Then we can do a similar experiment with the second slit. Again, we see flashes. Then we can do two slits. And we see flashes from the two slits. The interesting thing is the probability distributions from the one slits look a lot like the probability distribution with the classical bullets. But when we open two slits, the probability distribution from the two slits being open looked an awful lot like the intensity distribution from the wave experiment. So that's very different. Some comments. The results persist even if the electron current is, re is reduced to arbitrarily low levels. In other words, you can dial the electron current down to the point where there's only one electron at a time in the system, and you still see the three-hump probability distribution. If you try to measure where the electron goes through, which slit they go through, for example, the interference pattern goes away. In other words, the distribution of electrons changes so that you no longer see the interference effect. You cannot define or you cannot identify which slit the electron goes through. If you do, the, in the interference pattern is destroyed. Here's another question. If we don't know whether the right slit is open or closed, is there a measurable event that would tell us for certain one way or the other? In other words, is there a single measurement you can make, which if the measurement turned out one way or the other, you could determine with certainty that the other slit was open and uh, or was not open? Think about that. Stop the podcast and think about it. Okay, I'm, I hope you're back again. Uh, the measurement that you might think of is to put a detector at the zero of the interference pattern. If you measure a photon there, then you know for certain that the right slit is closed. That's called an interaction-free measurement. In other words, you've detected the presence of something over the slit, but the photon that you measured went through the other slit. The photon never went through the right slit. So there's actually a whole current field of research called interaction-free measurement, deducing things without interacting with the thing you're, whose presence or absence of presence you're, de you're deducing. Okay, here's a clicker question. How do electrons behave like classical bullets? Stop and think about that. The, uh, the way they behave like classical bullets is that they're measurable in discrete lumps. Okay. Um, how do electrons behave like classical waves? Uh, they, uh, they have amplitude adding, just like classical waves. That's the idea. So, um, and finally, next time, I'd like you to install Python and Visual Python on your laptops. You can get that from the K drive in the 465 folder. Make sure you do the pre-flights. And... Uh, See the examples that come with Visual Python, get a flavor for what they're like. And next time we'll pick up with uh, some more math and other fun stuff.
Talk to you soon. Bye.